Nature Welcome to Natureback podcast where we are talking with uh, entrepreneurs and investors about the uh, green future. Today my guest is Sonia Maria Ignatius from a Finnish company Causal. Uh, Sonia Maria, what is Causal doing? Causal helps cities turn their climate goals into actions. Uh, we provide cities and local governments with a software as a service so they can set clear climate targets. They can build actionable climate plans and then they can turn those climate plans into actions together with their community. Um, apart from climate mitigation and adaptation, we are also having cities who use this platform for uh, other sustainability topics such as uh, circular economy, air quality, biodiversity and urban mobility. How many cities have signed up by now? We have around 40 cities and also regional governments. Um, and that's on nine different countries and three different continents. So it's very widespread already. Mm. Uh, as they say, a good beginning. Uh, how, yeah. how, did you, how did you guys come up with the idea? What was the beginning point of Causal? Mm -hmm. Uh, I was myself working for the city of Helsinki as a climate change specialist. And uh, that was in uh, 2017 when we started drafting a climate plan for Helsinki, carbon neutral Helsinki 2035. Uh, I, was in, uh, I was organizing the stakeholder engagement and we got a lot of different climate actions. We got hundreds of stakeholders who were very excited about the plan and we ended up with 150 actions for the Helsinki's climate plan. Um, then we realized that we didn't have any proper tools to keep track of how these actions actually are progressing. Uh, we were sending Excel spreadsheets once a year and uh, asking people like the city staff that, hey, how many solar panels did you install and how many people joined your energy guidance and uh, how many schools have you retrofitted? Um, and uh, people didn't remember very well anymore when we asked like uh, information that was from one year or several years back. And they thought that, why are we asking these questions? And uh, it, the data was not good quality. We never knew where we were standing right now. So it was very difficult to use that information for decision making. Also citizens asked me and my colleagues like, hey, what is Helsinki doing for climate mitigation? And then often they thought that we were not doing anything. Um, but that was simply because we also didn't communicate properly what we were doing. So there was this, um, this um, problem. Also politicians wanted to know what was going on and they also didn't have very good view of it. So uh, I started developing together with with uh, uh, my colleagues this platform so that we could stay on track on Helsinki's climate actions and we could make sure Helsinki actually gets to what it's promised. Mm, and uh, it we launched it in 2019 uh, in autumn and then other cities came to me and asked that, hey, we want to have something similar. Um, and it it looked like there is really a need for for such a platform uh so then right at the beginning of the pandemic we we started the company together with uh, four founders and and um yeah now we are 18 people and it's been a very very interesting ride 18 or 80 18 <laughs> wow okay but yeah. still but still uh, <laughs> so getting quite... there too <laughs> Quite a, quite a growth still. Uh, but I understand that with a, a lot of uh, climate uh, kind of reporting and a lot of kind of bigger climate projects actually tracking and uh, what you're doing is, is one of the biggest challenges. Yes, uh, it's true because climate actions can be anything from from uh, energy pr production and like uh, phasing out coal, for instance, in energy production. And then you have actions that are more behavioral and that have an impact on a lo longer term and it's quite difficult also to compare and they have uh, different benefits and uh, and uh, some have more immediate impacts but then others are important for instance for social justice so yes that's very very difficult to to track them 
I mean, uh, Helsinki's experience has probably given you a lot of insight how to do it, but, but in general, what's the key of, you know, tracking uh, or solving this tracking challenge? Mm. Uh, we have been very surprised that these challenges that we faced in Helsinki, they seem to be really universal. And that's also why our platform has been so scalable, because the same same problems of uh, difficult data collection, managed data, data management, and also how to engage the, um, first of all, the uh, city staff, and then how to engage the stakeholders and like citizens. Uh, so, uh, so the key is to to make it all visible, like what's what's being planned, and also not just what is going well, but what is not going well, and uh, why something is not going well. Because if you are transparent about it, then it's also a possibility to learn inside the organization, but also it's a possibility for other cities to learn about about it. So I think this transparency is is really a key in in efficient tracking. Many startups are often afraid of dealing with, uh, you know, city governments and the uh, public sector mm. as as a buy, you know, counterpart or the or the you know buying party. Uh, how have you managed this? Uh, you know, the, most of them are fear afraid of long sales cycles and a lot of bi bureaucracy and so on. I mean, coming from inside the system, you're probably more familiar with it. We have encountered this uh, this um, question quite many times that hey why why public sector and why governmental organizations? For us, it was a very natural step as all the founders had experience within public sector. Um, so for us, it's not being new, and I think for many startups. The challenge might be that they don't come from that space, and then uh, it's they might have also uh, kind of wrong expectations and don't know how to play play by the rules. But if you know the rules, you can also you know how how to play play there. Uh, for for us, it's not been a problem. It's true that the sales cycles can be long sometimes, but on the other hand, the uh, city uh, governments. They are very reliable. They pay their bills. Also, once you have gotten in and um, you have this in their budget, they are not going to be every year like, hey, do we want this or not? But they are also very sticky as customers. Mm -hmm. Of course. The uh, How is the kind of uh, the startup journey has been for you guys? I mean, starting as a four founders from public sector, launching a startup Probably not the most natural thing for a typical public sector servant to actually do. What have mm -hmm. been the kind of the biggest, I don't know, learnings or the hiccups maybe from that side? Uh, it's it's truly been a learning experience for for all of us. Mm. Uh, yeah, where to start? What's what's been <laughs> the most important learnings? Um, I think what what's been quite easy for us has been um understanding the customer's perspective because we uh, that's like the solution has really started fr from from that and uh, we have also always developed this together with the customers all the time but what's been more difficult has been has been the the business and commercial side um so that's been maybe more challenging mm, and uh, also how to talk with investors. And uh, that's been something none of us has really done before, really. Um, even though we have worked with with uh, public funding uh, and also research organizations and uh, research funding, but not, not like uh, VCs, for instance. So that's been really a lot of learning for us. Uh, for sure. I mean, I can only imagine. The uh, what are the next milestones? Looking forward, what are your kind of what are your big plans? We are now focusing a lot on on uh, on German market and on uh, or German speaking market. We have hired people for that. 
uh, we are also testing the waters in uh, in in Brazil. So for us, the the biggest milestones is to 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 show that this is this is really uh, scalable on different markets and not just in in uh, in Finland, for instance, and that we have already proved. But still, we have this often this uh, question that hey, is it is it really useful for for all kinds of cities and not just cities that are advanced already, but uh, different sizes of cities. So we want to make sure that it's possible for even a very like newbie city or municipalities to start. And then we have, as we already have, the biggest and or like really big and ambitious cities like like Zurich and uh, San Diego there. So we want to make it available for for cities of all sizes and also not just cities, but regions and state level as well. What's the biggest uh, client or the biggest city on the platform today? Mm. Uh, we have uh, we have city of San Diego. That's that's the biggest one currently. Interesting. U.S. and uh, cli- mon- climate monitoring. It's not the first thing one would uh, connect in their mind, but uh, it's uh, probably very normal. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, um, I wanted to ask how. I mean, it's would the platform be. Uh, adaptable for maybe global corporations it sounds to me that their challenges are in this field are very similar to sometimes to the cities mm. you just replace the you know people living in the city with the people actually working for the company and you have the whole community aspect there and all this all this in a way similar logic mm. that's also a question that's often asked like why why not offer this for businesses and for corporations and for sure that's something that we um, we can keep our eyes open at the moment and also for the next next uh, next years to come we are most likely focusing on public sector organizations because we have a lot of experience we know there's a need and we are um, yeah it looks like we want to focus and we want yeah. to be and, and, great in that. And there is probably a lot to do. There is kind of no worries about the, you know, too high penetration of the market or something like that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. It's it's still surprisingly few players on on the market. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, cities are still still doing their managing and monitoring and communication on. Excel. spreadsheets yes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or they don't do it at all so yeah it's, that's the uh, other it's option simply, simply interesting that they, yeah uh, kind of looking at the um, I know impact you guys mm. are having what are the kind of I don't know so far the biggest impact you have seen or the or the biggest impact you think causal could actually have mm. it has helped them save their time and focus on the implementation of actions rather than like reporting actions so or data collection so that's been for sure important that the the time of the climate coordinators who are using this platform and coordinating the whole action bunch of actions inside the city that they can spend their time more effectively so that's that's very important also that they can engage better their um their people and departments, for instance, who didn't know that they are supposed to do something for climate change, that they have then been more active. Um, there have been also cases where uh, citizens have become active and they have started to ask politicians and ask civil servants, that, hey, why is this action delayed? Are you going to do something about it or not? So they have put pressure on also on politicians and, um, and also... Um, there are some customers who wanted to have this platform because their civil society wanted to have a continuous monitoring and transparency of the action. So now we are making it possible for, for them. For instance, the city of Konstanz in Germany, they are doing quarterly uh, quarterly um, climate, climate report. reports. Yes, exactly. Wow. Okay. I thought climate, climate reporting is more like a very long-term this uh, mm. qu- quarterly thinking is somewhat 
I could say almost worrying me. <laughs> Looking at the kind of, looking at the kind of quarterly economics uh, yeah. cycles and the quarterly corporate reporting, where you know to reach the quarterly numbers, they are ready to fire people and do do whatever that the uh, kind of the audience of investors would be happy. And uh, you know maybe mm. maybe uh, jumping a gun here a little bit, but if the uh, government would be you know trying to please. Uh, citizens on a quarterly level on their climate targets, maybe not all their decisions would be, you know, long-term sustainable because there's next elections coming in two years or one year or, you know, numbers have to look good and then after elections we, we might not be in power so we don't, we don't need to worry about it. Maybe mm. that's the cynical journalist in me speaking, but <laughs> at the same time, you know, I'm sure there are other a lot of cynical peoples in the politics. Yeah, and... Uh... And our target in causal is also to make it visible what the different actions and decisions that are maybe done uh, right before the elections, what are they based based at? Like, uh, what are the values and what are the facts that are underlying? And why was something chosen? So that it's, it's also transparent. And um, it's true that this can lead to like, optimi like optimizing for the short term Gains. Uh, I still think it's a, uh, like not acting is a bigger risk, and it's very easy for politicians to set a target for net zero 2040 or net zero 2030. Even it's it's still like uh, there are still some years, and they might not be in power. But when it comes to the implementation of the actions, that's where usually the the difficult questions and difficult discussions start. Exactly. Um, the uh kind of expansion to the German-speaking countries uh, looking into Brazil uh, mm. already in San Diego and the kind of the Northern Europe uh, very well. What are the other kind of the, you said 40, con 40 cities are using or mm. is, is there kind of, yeah. are they, is, is, do, are you still overrepresented in uh, Northern Europe in that equation or how is it geographically placed? Mm. We have in Finland. We have we have a uh, about thirty percent of Finnish population is living in a in a, a municipality that is using using causal. So that's uh, in in Finland. We are very widespread and have big cities here. And also our smallest customers who have just uh, six thousand inhabitants uh, are also in Finland. Uh, we have in in Switzerland. Uh, two cities in in Germany. We have uh, four cities like city of Bremen and city of Potsdam, bigger ones. Uh, we have also in the in UK, uh, in Latvia, um, also in in Denmark. So that's like more like scattered. And then we have uh, in in Australia and in in uh, in Canada as well as in in the US. We have several ones. The um... As a you know, citizen living in a city, would I need to find a causal platform somehow through uh, my city government pages, or can I kind of find the information through you know, I don't know, Causal Central? Mm, on the we on our website, on Causal website, we have case studies of of uh, our customers. We don't have. Um, like uh, like an extensive list of all the customers yet and um, many of them haven't officially launched yet so they are because the content comes from the customer they want to first uh, make sure that they are happy with the content and that sometimes takes a very short time and sometimes it takes uh, some months to do um, usually the cities they, they want to um, Make sure that it's easy to find this this site, so they they link it to like link it with their uh, existing city website, so that it will be easy to find, and they publish it as a subdomain of the of the city website. Mm. Good. Any kind of uh, wrap up thoughts? I mean, we were talking a little bit about your future already. Uh, we talked about uh, you know challenges of combining the public sector and the, the and the startup mindset, which is it is quite an interesting dilemma. And I'm I'm hoping you are I don't know going around and speaking at the startup events about it how those two things can be combined because that would be really interesting to hear to be honest. Mm. 
Mm. I think we really need different, different uh, like founders and uh, teams with different backgrounds, and that's uh, like diversity is is, is uh, of course. Then in the end, it's uh, uh, it's important, and um, that's like um, that's one of our strengths that we have so different backgrounds and not just like originally founders. We have different backgrounds in. Um, like in skills and uh, in specialization and now we have also 10 different nationalities in the team and different age of people so so that's for sure uh, um, an asset absolutely um, thanks Sonia Maria for your time today and uh, good luck with uh, building the, the empire thank you Darwin. if you're a working professional wondering what's next for your career you've come to the right place Whether you're looking for a promotion, growth, or a potential career transition, look no further. With over 30 years working in a variety of industries, I share my insider knowledge with those ready to get ahead on Career Advancement with Craig Ansell. Tune in to get your strategies for success. Stay smooth with the sweet sounds on Sat95. We have the finest selection of smooth jazz from around the world. Download the Autolist app from the App Store or Google Play or listen online at autolist.com forward slash sat95. We are the global destination for contemporary jazz, Sat95.